Hello everyone! This video series will be all about how to assemble the Datsun Prusa i3. Okay you guys, now we have mounted all three axes. The X, the Y and the Z axis. But for the machine to actually do any kind of printing, we need the last axis, the E axis better known as the extruder. The extruder in, on this particular 3D printer is called a direct drive extruder, which means that the filament travels directly through the drive gear and almost straight to the hot end. We will need these parts for the E-axis, and by now surely you know about the updated list in the Datsun GitHub page. Let's jump right in. The first part we... This part, and we need this part, and two of those. Okay. Be very careful with the, these, that you don't throw them away. Slots here. Of course, it's very important to mount this the correct way. Just gonna look in the manual. It says to put the gear towards the this piece that stands a little in from the side. Okay, here comes the test. Yeah, it should run freely like that. That's. That part finished, put it aside. Then we take the extruder body, um, which for the Datsun Prusa i3 is designed for this kind of hot end. Um, this one is called the Spider hot end. It's a version you can get here in Denmark, but it is the same kind of hot end that's also used on, a, on the on the CR10, which, which is a printer that's very popular, so I'm sure you all know that one. For this part, which is step six, it says to take the uh, filament sensor, but we don't use a filament sensor, so we can skip that part of step six. However, we do need to take two of the normal uh, M3 hex nuts so we have a hole for a hex nut there, and we have a hole for a hex nut there. And of course, in some other places, but these are the ones we are gonna work on now. I'm gonna borrow one of the long M3 bolts because that makes it so much easier to put stuff into its place. And in this case, stuff, of course, is the M3 hex nut. Okay, so it says to put one right here and on picture two of step seven we flip it over and we have another gap for an m3 hex nut right here okay. tight fit In. Okay, and then step eight is all about assembling filament sensor. Start again at step 10, where we will need, need this part. Okay, let me just show you a quick tip for making sure you have the right length of a PTFE tube on the hot end. Um, before you mount this 
uh, extruder body on the motor you should push it up into here and get it aligned with where you want it get it up so that they are perfectly aligned and then we can cut it as it's supposed to like this okay and then we are going to need a an M3 by 30 millimeter bolt um, and the manual says you need to use uh, nylon washers I don't know where my nylon washers are at the moment so I'm just gonna use some some regular some regular M3 um, small sized washers okay and then the idea here is to get the idler mounted in its place like this and to make yeah, this go from the back side put on a washer to make some distance between this all the way in right there and as the manual states you can use a, a normal hex nut to make sure that this little washer doesn't keep falling off okay now we need the stepper motor and there should be another of these drive gears the difference between the one we mounted in this and the one that we mount will we'll be mounting on the on the motor is that the one that is used for the motor has this little tightening screw okay so we want the the big teeth to point point outwards and we don't want this to be tight in a way that we can't move it find in the package 2 m3 by 30 that's each one right here okay so for this next part we need to put these through there this temporary hex nut needs to be removed If this gear gets pushed too far uh, against the motor, you, you can't align this uh, this uh, extruder body piece correct on top of the on top of the stepper motor. So be careful with that. Take a piece of filament. So the idea here is to make sure that it sits straight across the two openings and then we will simply tighten this in a way that we are absolutely sure that it's in the middle. Okay, so now we need two of the M3 by 40 millimeter bolts and the extruder springs, compression springs. 
Um, these I have actually borrowed from the yellow Datsun because I didn't have any more of these. Um, and also I think they are a bit uh, too small um, and not strong enough. I've ordered some new ones which should be better, but for now we can use these. I'm gonna put them on the 40 millimeter long holes and opposite to the idler there is two holes where they fit in perfectly like that okay step 17 um, here we're gonna use this and we will be using the only two M3 by 25 millimeter bolts we have in the bill of material for the E-axis that is, and three square nuts. Okay. And of course the hot end will now be mounted. And you want the the part that sticks out from the, the heat sink to go towards the back of the printer. So I'm gonna push this here. So in addition to what they say in step 17 that you uh, need uh, the three square nuts, you need two of the 25 millimeter bolts and uh, the, the hot end. You also need to secure the spider hot end, uh, two uh, M3 hex nuts and two 20 millimeter bolts. Um, I almost forgot that. Okay, now back to the actual manual where we need to put a, a helper right on this top right here. And the other two are going into these little holes. All the way in. Okay. And the extruder cover actually only mounts in one direction, so that should be pretty easy. Make sure it's all the way on right there. These two there and there
this is where the air from the cooler will flow through to cool down the, the colder part of the hot end. Okay. okay, now we need to find four M18 screws um, in this puppy right here. Uh, and so we're gonna have that mounted there. Before we do this, we need to use this uh, this channel right here. I was actually hoping not to put any wires on until I absolutely had to, but it makes good sense to do this. No stupid noises. This looks good. Then we need the the nozzle fan, the nozzle fan funnel. I like to call it. Is of course the part that goes right here and um, cools cools down the printed parts, uh, cools down the filament as it comes out of the hot end. Uh, you notice that this is in a different color. It's simply because it's printed in, uh, well, I chose ASA filament uh, because it could withstand uh, a lot higher uh, temperatures than the regular PETG or even the PLA. Uh, I guess you could also do these in ABS, uh, but I'm, I've grown kind of fond of this ASA for these uh, particular parts that needs to uh, sit close to hot ends and, and other um, stuff with high temperature. So that's why this one has another color. And we then need, we are needing this, this and let's see, 2M3 by 10 millimeter right there okay and a single hex nut and an an 18 millimeter m3 yeah okay so we start by getting this aligned in this support here. To do. You should be able to mount the cable afterwards. This part right here has actually been redesigned a couple of times to to make room for this uh, wider piece on these kind of stable motor. Okay. 
then we take this little piece right here, another 10 millimeter M3. Okay, next up we will be mounting this hard fan. I think that this particular kind of uh, radial fan that I got is a bit wider, so this M3 by 18 millimeter won't work. I will be switching it out for a 20 millimeter. Now that starts to look like a real hot end print head. And if we are lucky, it will also print stuff later. Okay, so we don't use a Pinda probe. We use this cheap Chinese induction sensor. I do believe it's a PNP. Yeah, PNP. Normally open. And we don't need these. Okay, this is where it needs one of these. And either a 15 millimeter or an 18 millimeter, I guess. Okay, and this right here is the mount for the Pinder probe, or in this case, the induction probe. just aligned with the bottom for starters we may have to change it but just to have some place to start it out this to go under uh, I always turn the induction sensor so that I can watch the, the little LED that says which uh, says when it's been activated uh, to watch uh, where I stand when I use the printer, so you can do that, or you can do it your own way. Just a little space here for uh, 18 or 5. I actually think you need that. 18 millimeter to secure the probe. That should be. Very good. Pro and this one, I guess it is. This one goes on the other side. This is the stepper motor and the and the hot end fan, not the hot fan, that's this one. Um, okay. so. You might have noticed that uh, I'm using a, a yellow uh, 3D printed sorting tray when I'm building. I have uh, put a link down in the description to the to the page where you can get that. It's a simple enough print, but it's really helpful when you need some place to, to hold your screws and bolts and nuts and stuff like that. One of the M one M3 by 40 and one M3 by 30 and one M3 by 18. Use the 40 millimeter screw 
which will hang it on. Then we use on the, let's see, the 18 millimeter screw is on the opposite side of the hundred and fan that's this side and the 30 millimeters on the other side Step 32 we will just skip because we have no filament runout sensor. We prefer to cry instead of doing backup. Okay, well this is where we use the 3mm nylon uh, filament. Of course I should mention that before I, before I started I made I have been, uh, let's just see if we can focus on that. As you can see, it's to a point at the end and in, in both ends. The, the hole it goes in, the hole that is used for this is the one right above the lower of the LM8UU bearing. We need this printed part, this printed part, and 10 millimeter, and one of these, get um, the hex nut flush with this uh, notch for it. The 40 millimeter, Nice and tight. Now it's time to push some wires through. Yeah. They are all going this way eventually, and everything. Besides the thermistor and the the heat cartridge, which goes on the bottom, so we need to somehow get it all through eventually. Also, don't forget the nylon filament. Now it's time to get this nice back piece mounted. For this we use M3 by 10 millimeter bolts. And if I am not mistaken, we need five of these.
This is the, the custom cable strain relief for the Datsun Prusa. Um, it goes right here on the frame. Um, a couple of M3 by 20 millimeters should do. This cable strain part has two sides. Um, the top here uh, has kind of a funnel opening, whereas the other end is only just fits. So it's just to make it easier to put this uh, nylon piece of nylon filament into the strain. You can put this side upwards. On the original Prusa manual, this is where you put the zip ties on this and put textile sleeve on the build or on these cables. But I, I won't do that just yet because I need to make this cable longer. The cable sleeving will be mounted later. Um, but for now, we are going to finish with the last piece which will be mounting the top. So in order to make this ready, this piece, top piece right here, you need uh, another piece of the PTFE tube, 13 millimeters of length, uh, pushed all the way up so that you can see that it sits flush with the lip in this hole right here. And it is actually very easy to mount. You put it in here with a lot of room, push it over, hold it down, and should be able to just drive this bolt in. with my fingers. Don't ask me why, but then the final piece printed is this. I have no idea what it does, but it sits right there, which then actually completes this part of the build. Yeah, so we got uh, we got the extruder mounted. Just one last piece about the E-axis. If when you put on this uh, back plate um, and tighten these five screws, if you can't, if it's very tight to uh, very hard to to move this, simply just unscrew them these five just a bit, and then find out which one makes it. Uh, st stick to the to the to the steel rods. Uh, you should be able to move it fairly easily across. Um, of course, this is because I use the uh, the Igus drylin, and make sure you don't over tighten these if you are using the um, the Igus drylin bearings. Okay, you guys, that was a long one, the longest video so far. The next step will be the LCD assembly, and it's uh, it's a it's not a long build. It should be very quick. Uh, the parts are few, and the assembly is simple enough. Uh, the only thing that's different from the original manual is that we don't use this uh, kind of frame. We have the 12 millimeter plywood frame which means that we of course use longer bolts for, for, uh, for the LCD display. Uh, but other than that, it should be straight sailing towards the goal. So, but again, I wanna thank you all for watching this video all the way to the end. Um, 
I hope you enjoy building the Datsun Prusa or at least enjoy watching it getting built. Thank you so much for the support so far and of course um, you could always hit the like button if you like this video. Also don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified when the next part, that's going to be part 5 I think, um, part 5 where we uh, put on the LCD screen. So yeah, until next time there's not much more to say. Uh, Happy building! Hey, pop the trunk, I open up, I sold my soul a good price out of sight, and my whole got time.